This brief was created with open source information readily available on the internet. Now take it with a pinch of salt however, as some aspects are missing due to the sensitivity of the nature under the Official Secret Act. The Type 23 or Duke class was a class of anti-submarine warfare frigates designed in the closing stages of the Cold War for anti-submarine operations in the North Sea. Now by this point it's actually getting apparent that the Leander class would need a replacement as they were getting a little bit long in the tooth. However, a ship to ship replacement wouldn't be feasible, so a larger, more capable set of hulls would be created. In essence, quality over quantity. The idea of a Type 23 frigate came out in the late 1970s when they were designed to counter Soviet nuclear submarines in the North Atlantic, and this would follow into the design they were created. But this is also with the subsequent designs of the Type 24 and Type 25s although they had a different design for different roles. So going back to the Type 23, the design was centred around the towed array sonar system, as well as the vertical launch short range surface to air missiles, mounting a 4.5 inch gun, as well as harpoon, and a Lynx helicopter. So with that in mind, the ships were ordered in early 1980s, with 16 ships being ordered. The ships would be named Norfolk, Marlborough, Argyle, Lancaster, Iron Duke, Monmouth, Montrose, Westminster, Northumberland, Richmond, Somerset, Grafton, Sutherland, Kent, Portland, and St Albans. These ships would be 4,900 tonne vessels. Their dimensions would be 133 metres long, 16.1 metres wide, and have a draft of 7.5 metres. The power plant will consist of a cod lag system, meaning combined diesel electric and gas turbines. So they would have four diesel generators, two GEC electric motors, and two Rolls Royce Marine Spay gas turbines, powering the said two electric motors, which then turned two variable pitch propellers for a speed of 28 knots. Their range would be 7,500 nautical miles or from Her Majesty's naval base Portsmouth to Norfolk, Virginia, with about 1,390 nautical miles left in the tanks. However, whilst on operations, every two weeks, it was advised to replenish food for her 185 officers and ratings, as well as their AVCAT for the Lynx helicopters. The ships would be armed with two quad harpoon subsonic anti-ship missiles, capable of hitting targets at a maximum range of 48.5 nautical miles. 32 vertical launch Seawolf surface to air missiles capable of point defense. These missiles are supersonic missiles capable of hitting targets out to 5 nautical miles. This would be placed during midlife refits, but I'll touch on that a little bit later on. One BA Systems 4.5 inch 55 caliber dual purpose Mark 8 gun capable of 25 rounds per minute out to a maximum range of 11.8 nautical miles, with a traverse of about 270 degrees and a maximum elevation of 65 degrees. This weapon is an auto-reload weapon system capable of being fired from the ops room. Two 30mm ASCG mounts capable of hitting a target out to 2.75 nautical miles in day or night. Smaller arms consist of two GPMGs, two miniguns, and two twin 12.75 inch torpedo tubes for the Stingray lightweight acoustic homing torpedo capable of sinking submarines out to 5.9 nautical miles down to 800 meters. The ship's radars and sensor fit consists of one Type 996 early warning tracking radar operating in the Echo Foxtrot bands capable of detecting targets out to 13.5 nautical miles. 2. Type 1007 India slash Juliet band navigational radars capable of a range of 25 nautical miles. 1. Type 1008 Echo Foxtrot band navigational radar capable of a range of 36 nautical miles. 2. Type 911 India slash Juliet band fire control radars for the Seawolf Sith to air missile system, using a Kessegrain design to guide the missiles onto target. 1. 
type 2050 Baumanta Sonar and one type 2031 Zulu towed array. This has now been replaced, but I'll touch on that later on. Now they'd also have one UAT ESM fit for radar detection, and finally the ships carry four six-barrel Seagant off-board decoy launchers, as well as two six-barrel off-board noisemaker launchers, as well as a Type 182 towed decoy array system. I touched on this earlier on, but the ships would also, technically in their weapons fit, carry a Lynx helicopter, but the Wafus would you know, have a go at me if I didn't include that into the uh, weapon systems. Anyway, so with all that stats, it's basically a lot of stuff these ships carry. But we will continue onwards. So the ships would be laid down between December 14th, 1985 and April 18th, 1999, with the ships being launched between July of 1987 and May of 2000, being commissioned between June 1990 and the 6th of June 2002. Norfolk, Argyle, Lancaster, Iron Duke, Monmouth, Montrose, Somerset, Grafton, Sutherland, Kent and Portland, along with St Albans, would be built by Marconi Marine in Scotston, and Marlborough, Westminster, Northumberland, Richmond would be built by Swan Hunter. So, in the early years of the class's history, Norfolk would be the first ship of the class to conduct trials accumulating in BOST, or Basic Operational Sea Training, and by next year, taking part in Exercise Joint Warrior, but a defect would put her alongside for rectification. She'd sail on Orient 92 with Invincible, Boxer and Newcastle, sailing as far east as Hong Kong, returning back in November, by which time Marlborough came into service. Now, Marlborough had the pennant number changed prior to launch because it originally would have been F-232. However, this was considered unlucky and is also the Form S-232 being the formal notification of grounding or collision. Additionally to that, the Course 232 is also traditionally not given for the same reason, with a course heading of half degree either side of 232 being used as an alternative when at sea. Now, she would be the first ship to assist the USS Cole after she suffered a suicide boat attack in Yemen. Now, Marlborough would be on her way home after a six month deployment to the Gulf. She assisted instantly and diverted to Yemen to help the Cole. Lancaster would deploy for nine months in the Caribbean in 1994 and act as a guard ship to the yacht, the HMY Britannia whilst conducting counter-piracy operations as well as sonar trials. Monmouth would hold the title of the Black Duke after the Monmouth Rebellion against James II of England. She would be the only ship in the fleet to carry her name painted in black instead of red and holds the most battle honours of any ship serving currently in the fleet. She would be the first warship to visit New Zealand since the 1985 Anzus dispute, as well as being the first ship to visit Dublin since 1960. She was stand by Point Noah in West Africa on Operation Kingfisher, in readiness for the evacuation during the deteriorating political situation in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. She was also ordered to stand in Sierra Leone to provide humanitarian assistance during the Civil War. Most of the ships would have deployments all over the world, and every ship has a detailed service career. They are the workhorse of the fleet, and became quite evident with the scale down of the Navy and the decommissioning of the Batch 1 and 2 Type 42 destroyers in the early 2000s. All the ships were fitted with towed arrays, so they would be used as TAPs, or Towed Array Patrol Ships, alternating with their sister ships operating in the English Channel, North Sea, and North Atlantic. Now, aside from that, Westminster would be used for the interior shots for the James Bond movie Tomorrow Never Dies, where she plays three different ships, the Chester, the Devonshire, and the Bedford. In 2004, Grafton would play HMS Suffolk during the ITV series Making Waves, showing Suffolk going through FOST or Flag Officer Sea training. It's lightly dramatised and is 
flipping honking and you kind of get to see what happens in the modern navy but don't take it with any credence it is abysmal you can find it all on youtube just type in itv making waves and it'll come with it but i wouldn't recommend it anyway after grafton was filmed for making waves defense secretary jeff hoon announced that norfolk marlborough and grafton were to be paid off and by 2005 it was announced that she'd be sold to the chilean navy and to be delivered in 2008 by the 2000s these ships were the quietest frigates in the world and excellent for the anti-submarine operations they were designed for however between 2004 and 2012 these ships were refitted and received the new type 2087 towed array sonar an amazing piece of kit that can detect the latest submarines from a considerable distance however at full power they do have a tendency of screwing up dolphins and they end up being washed up on Falmouth Beach where they eventually unfortunately die so it's a common practice in the Royal Navy to keep an eye out for marine mammals to keep them safe from these scary sonars but the five oldest frigates wouldn't actually have these sonars fitted Argyle, Iron Duke, Monmouth, Montrose and Lancaster would lose their tails and become general purpose frigates the Chilean vessels would actually receive these 2087 sonars to enhance their roles as a general purpose frigate by the 2010s the ships would undertake a midlife refit which lasted around about 12 to 18 months this consisted of docking down into the frigate refit complex in Plymouth where they would basically refurbish the drivetrain and mess decks as well as fitting a transom flap this protrusion increases the ship by about a knot and reduces the fuel consumption by 13 percent now the midlife refits would take the ships out of water so they would replace the anti fouling paint and all the crap that's built up on the hull repainting it and the ships would gain apparently two knots the seawolf missiles would have a midlife update and the 4-5 would change from the round gun turret to a multi-sided one for better radar cross-section comms and command systems would also be updated as well as the fitting of the DNA command system by 2013 Iron Duke would be the first ship to have the type 997 ET Echo Foxtrot band radar this has better range better performance in the littoral and air defense roles as well as having the implementation of the ability to be impossible to jam and that is a good thing it is now used on the Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carriers the Albion class LPDs and as well as HMS Ocean now the Brazilian LPH Atlantico with all ships fitting this by 2017 in 2016 CAM was in development intended to replace Seawolf now this system offered greater ranges out to 13.5 nautical miles and the system would be a one-for-one -one replacement with Seawolf this would be implemented into the Life X refits starting in 2016 with the Argyle the Seawolf silos and missiles were removed and would be fitted with what is known as Sea Scepter the first test fires occurred in 2017 and the Sea Scepter doesn't actually need its own dedicated radar system so NAR11 was removed and replaced with a small data link download dome atop the bridge don't quote me on that assessment though it's what I found on the internet so additionally the type 1008 radar would be removed and replaced by a sharp eye echo foxtrot nav radar for better resolution and tracking if the unlikelihood that 997 develops a defect by 2018 the type 23 frigate has been rolled into the anti-submarine warfare escort role of the British carrier strike group as HMS Queen Elizabeth comes into testing and eventually operation Additionally, some frigates take the role of FRE or fleet ready escorts, with Richmond escorting the Peter the Great and Admiral Kuznetsov through the English Channel, and the Westminster recently escorting the Vitz Amaral Kulakov through the English Channel when she went to meet up with the Vasily Baikov 
and two Gazprom vessels as they transited north. Now, in 2018, Monmouth would escort the Queen Elizabeth on Westland 18, and by 2019, Northumberland would join the QE for Westland 19. I even got to spend a week on the Northumberland to finish my task book, and that was a bit of an eye-opener. By 2020, Richmond received the new PGMU refit, where she received new diesel engines, and sporting a new Ford exhaust. Now, being a triangle, instead of a kind of angled, stepped arrangement on other vessels. 2020 also sees Richmond and Kent operating with the Queen Elizabeth during a period where QE was at sea for 10 weeks during BOST to develop the skills for intership cooperation, as well as cooperation with Keris Strike embarked on the flagship. Looking at the future of the class, Kent and Richmond are to be the anti-submarine warfare escorts for the CSG-21 deployment, alongside Queen Elizabeth, Defender, Dauntless, Fort Victoria, as well as a tire class tanker. Now, open sources suggest that Argyle will be decommissioned in 2023 to be replaced by the Type 31 and Type 26 frigates. St Albans will be the last one to be decommissioned, and this will be by 2036. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so that's the end of that video. Hopefully you learned something new, because I most certainly did. Now, if you want to go and support the channel, there is a link in the description below to the Patreon page. I would recommend doing it, but it's up to you. Also, if you want to come and talk to me, there's a link in the description for the Discord channel. There's a couple of good guys over there. We talk about a wide variety of stuff. So yeah, so thanks for watching, guys. Hit that notification button to stay up to date with what I'm uploading. And obviously give it a like, give it a subscribe if you really want to, and comments always good. I like reading your comments. So take care. Catch you next time.